So I've been thinking about how to approach the subject of moon hoaxes for a while. Put simply, their arguments are ludicrous and pathetic, and even the worst irrational, egotistical libertarian who loves to initiate a screaming fit at anyone who disagrees with him, whether he is right or wrong, can refute them easily in most cases. One particular point was made, that the astronauts were on wires because, apparently, the moon dust fell too quickly compared to the astronauts themselves. This, of course, was made by the same person who had earlier claimed that wires had suspended the astronauts to give the illusion that the astronauts were in one-sixth Earth gravity, only to follow up with a claim that the footage of the astronauts was deliberately slowed down to give the impression of low gravity, and then after that was disproved by a resident libertarian screaming banshee, went back to the, the astronauts are suspended on wires because the dust falls too fast. It should be obvious that someone who jumps back and forth between two conflicting and contradictory ideas about how the Apollo moon landings can be allegedly faked really has no case to present, given that they cannot even be consistent with their own conspiracy ideas. But for the sake of being thorough, I would like to deal with this claim of the dust falling too fast. The libertarian banshee response is to insult anyone making this claim and then show this clip. Good try, but it doesn't adequately demonstrate just how wrong these moon hoaxes are, and so I will now proceed with a more comprehensive refutation, because talking about measuring pixel lengths and frame rates is pointless when you can point out the following obvious fact. Kinetic energy from a non-straight-on motion of an object to the surrounding object will never be transferred at 100% efficiency. This is basic physics. Allow me to demonstrate. What you see in front of you now is a trial version of a piece of software known as Lightwave 3D. It is a special effects and 3D visualization software used in many production suites throughout the world, and the latest iteration of the software has had the open source bullet physics engine incorporated into it. The implementation, while not being wholly accurate and comprehensive from a scientific point of view, has enough precision to simulate physical properties that I will demonstrate in this video. The accuracy of the simulation can be adjusted in the software, increased at the cost of computational overhead. For the purposes of this demonstration, you will see the motion of a bullet through a grid of square chips with a hole in the centre. The reason for this is to demonstrate the various effects of kinetic energy transfer from the much heavier bullet object to the much lighter chips as they are impacted by the bullet moving through them. A few key considerations need to be noted with respect to the simulation. All objects in the scene use a variation of rigid body physics, including the chips. Each of the chips is approximately 12 millimeters long each side and also 2 millimeters in depth. Each chip masses approximately 0.24 grams. The bullet is considerably heavier. At one metric ton per cubic meter, a length of 270 millimeters in length and almost 100 millimeters diameter, the bullet masses approximately 27 kilograms according to the simulation. All masses are calculated according to the volumetric algorithm included as part of the bullet suite. The physics engine automatically calculates the position and kinetic energies of the chips for the first frame. Rigid body calculations are applied from the very beginning. On the other hand, the position and velocity of the bullet is calculated based on the first and last keyframes in the timeline of the animation, where the last keyframe of the object is set prior to the impact of the bullet with the chips. This is important as I will be presenting three simulated impacts at differing speeds. These will be discussed during playback of the simulations. Gravity calculation is disabled for the purposes of displaying transferred energy from bullet to the chips only. The simulation is set to calculate at a rate of 180 frames per second. The animation plays back at 30 frames per second, resulting in six physics calculations per displayed frame, sufficient for this demonstration. Now with all of these considerations in mind, I will now demonstrate what happens when the impacts take place. The first is a relatively high speed impact compared to the other two. The bullet impacts against the chips at approximately 2 meters per second. The more direct the impact, the more energy is transferred to the chips, resulting in an almost identical transfer of velocity forward. The more the impact is glancing from bullet to chip, the more the velocity is directed outward, while less kinetic energy is transferred from bullet to chip. Now look at the same impact from the side view. As the bullet strikes the chips, the result is clear. While many of the chips are propelled forward at almost the same rate, most of them are transferred with varying amounts of kinetic energy and at differing angles outwards. The second takes place at approximately half a meter per second velocity. 
and the third at approximately 200 mm per second velocity. As you can see, in all cases, the velocity from the bullet does not transfer at 100% efficiency from the bullet to the chips. Kinetic energy does not result in an equal velocity, or even speed, to the surrounding objects as they are impacted. So how does this translate into our moon dust jump scene? Simple. Based upon these physics simulations, we have just understood that energy does not transfer completely from one object to another. In the case of the astronaut leaping from the ground, most of the energy used is propelled by the astronaut in getting himself off of the ground. Only a small portion is transferred to the regolith, and only at glancing angles. While a certain amount of adhesive properties needs to be taken into account due to the nature of the regolith, this will still not translate into 100% kinetic energy transfer from boot to dust meaning that the velocity on the up-down axis is not 100%, meaning that some of the dust will fall back to the surface sooner as it does not reach as high an apex as some of the other dust. The explanation of some of the dust falling back to the surface before the astronaut reaches the surface again is not because he is on wires, which has already been disproven, it is because of simple physics. This of course does not take into account any of the other claims that have been debunked such as the fact that the regolith is a fine powdery substance that would dissipate in any atmosphere the same as dust would do on Earth, the fact that stock footage of the astronauts on the moon being sped up to give the impression that the astronauts are reacting in standard gravitational conditions makes their other more regular movements look odd, nor the fact that there are scientific experiments easily conductible on your own rooftop that will conclusively demonstrate that the United States has successfully landed on the moon and laid down reflective plates that are used to measure the exact distance between the Earth and the moon at any given moment. This is the difference between an infantile tantrum against moon hoaxers and a more comprehensive demonstration of their errors. I know which I would prefer if I needed to be proven wrong. What say you?